The Time Element, starring Bobby Slayton, with Stacey Keach as your narrator, was adapted for radio by Dennis Etchison and written for The Twilight Zone by Rod Serling. Heard in the cast were Mike Starr, Maggie Carney, Craig Brawley, Elizabeth Lado, Jeff Lupiton, Doug James, Kurt Nabig, Sarah Marks, Roger Walski, Bo Nortel, and Carl Amari. To learn more about the Twilight Zone radio dramas and to obtain audio cassettes and CDs of these programs, visit our website at twilightzoneradio.com. The producers of the Twilight Zone wish to thank CBS Enterprises, Carol Serling, Dennis Etchison, Dick Brescia Associates, Claire Simon Casting, Terry Jennings, XM Satellite Radio, Sirius Satellite Radio, our sponsors and our radio affiliates for helping make this series possible. This copyrighted radio series is produced and directed by Carl Amari and Roger Wolski for Falcon Picture Group. Doug James speaking. There is a fifth dimension beyond that which is known to man. It is a dimension as vast as space and as timeless as infinity. It is the middle ground between light and shadow, and it lies between the pit of man's fears and the summit of his knowledge. This is the dimension of imagination. It is an area which we call the Twilight Zone. Well, Mr. Jensen, I think I have the basics here. Oh, yeah? 41 years old, unmarried, no physical ailments, no previous visits to a psychiatrist. No previous arrest either, okay? And the only time I ever saw a shrink before was in a cartoon. Best you'll find us helpful and, at worst, harmless. Cigarette? No, thanks. Do you mind if I smoke? Hey, go ahead. It's your office. Now then, uh, your occupation... Oh, gosh, various jobs. Part-time bookie, I was a car dealer. I attended bar one time, right down the street from here. A couple of doors down. Andy's place. I was a butcher. Highly successful butcher, too. Knew how to make my thumbs weigh 12 pounds on the scale. So what do you say, Doc? How do I stack up? Normal? Abnormal? Subnormal? What's the story? <laughs> Family? Father, mother, both married. Scranton, Pennsylvania. My old man was a coal miner. Coal? Yeah, you know, little black things that people used to put in the furnaces. Sounds like interesting work. Oh, it does. Then maybe you ought to go to a psychiatrist. You know, I think I will take one of those cigarettes. Surely. What, do you want me to pull up a couch now or something? Not if you're comfortable in the chair. Let's begin, shall we? <laughs> Nothing shakes you up at all, does it, Doc? How do you mean? Oh, I don't know. Everything's all calm and cool. You know, when I walked in here, you made an inventory. The cut of the clothes, the way I talk, and up inside your head, huh? That's where you mark down those results. And then later, you put it all in little pigeonholes. You got me pegged, don't you? Not entirely. You figure you're talking to what? Maybe a minor league horse player, huh? Maybe I'm a little hungover, maybe a little buggy in the head. But either way, about 40 degrees tilt. And my cigarette went out. Here. <sighs> all right. Pigeonhole this, Dr. Gillespie. If said minor league horse player tells you some half-witted story, can you tell him if he's maybe off his rocker? Without Sigmund Freud and all that junk? Huh? Can you tell me in plain English what is wrong with me? I can try. All right. Here goes. I keep having a dream. A crazy dream. Are you writing this stuff down? Go on. I'll make notes on the things that seem pertinent. Well, I don't know if any of this is pertinent. Because it probably sounds nuts. Sounds nuts to me. But there it is. I'm listening. I've had this dream maybe, uh, I don't know, five, six times. What kind of dream? The real kind. How do you mean? Have you ever had a dream that you swear was real? I guess we all have. Over and over again? The same dream? The same dream, identical. Never changes. Tell me about it. It always begins the same way. I'm lying in a bed, and I just wake up all of a sudden, right? I open my eyes, start looking around. And what do you see? Hotel room. You know, nothing fancy. I mean, nice, regular. You know, I have Venetian blinds like, like you got here. So I get up to go across the room with my bare feet, all right? Now, I'm wearing pajamas that definitely are not mine. And I open up the blinds. Bright sun, blue sky, beautiful day. Beach, palm trees, like a vacation, you know? So I open up the window. You get those, uh, those French doors, whatever you call them. And what do I hear? 
steel guitars, ukuleles, you know, that, that, that hula music. The only thing is I've never been to Hawaii in my life. I don't even know what Hawaii looks like, except, you know, what you see in the movies. But it's as real as anything. And here's the crazy part. I, I don't know how I got there. But I do know, as well as I know anything in my life, that I'm supposed to be thousands of miles away. And there's nothing, absolutely nothing, Doc, that I could do about it. And that's when things get really weird. I mean, just bizarre. Once upon a time, there was a psychiatrist named Arnold Gillespie and a patient whose name was Peter Jensen. Mr. Jensen walked into the office exactly nine minutes ago. You might want to make note of that. It is 11 o'clock, Saturday morning, October 5th. You might want to make note of that, too, very specifically. It may seem trite to be so specific about the hour and the day, but in this case, it's of extreme importance. Because this isn't just a story about a man with a recurrent dream, one whose meaning the good doctor is about to help him unravel and sort out. Nothing so simple. Involved in this story is something new, not found in any textbook, Freudian or otherwise. Something we'll call, for want of a better term, the time element. And now, The Twilight Zone and our story, The Time Element, starring Bobby Slayton with Stacy Keach as your narrator. Front desk. Hey, uh, uh, tell me something. So, well, uh, I got in. Uh, I got, uh, got in pretty late last night, didn't I? I beg your pardon, sir. I asked you if I got in late last night. Is this two o six? I don't know. Is it two o six? I really don't know, Mr. Jensen. I wasn't on duty last night. Yeah, how about a morning paper? Oh, should be one in the hall outside your door. Yeah, thanks. That's perfectly all. What do you call this place anyway? Sir? What was that such a hard question? I just asked you the name of the hotel. Do you work here, pal? What are you just inspecting the kitchen or something? Why, this is the Royal Hawaiian. <laughs> uh, are you sure you're in the right hotel, Mr. Jensen? That's a good question. Here's the paper. December 6th. December 6th? What what, what kind of crazy? Maid service. Did you sleep well, sir? Yeah, that's a moot question. Do you want me to clean the room now? Hey, do you want to explain the gag to me now? Uh, Excuse me, sir? Do me a favor. Deliver a little message for me. You tell the guy, whoever put you up to this, that I'm going to knock out his teeth one by one. I don't know what you mean. Yeah, and take the phony newspaper with you, all right, lady? This is October. October, sir? What's October? What's October? 30 days, how's October, April, June, November, huh? Am I getting through to you? This month, this month right now, it's October, right? I don't believe so, sir. It's December. It's what? December the 6th. Yeah, that's what I thought you said. December 6th. Are you all right, sir? Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm just fine. I'm fine. Except that obviously I've just come down the home stretch of the biggest toot in the history of man. You're telling me this is December. Well, last night I was in New York City. And it was October. If you're not feeling well, I, I can come back later. Not feeling well? <laughs> you know what? That's the champion blue ribbon understatement of the year. You know, a little toot that lasts two months and ends up in, uh, oh, what's the name of this place? The name of what place, sir? This place. This place right here. The Royal Hawaiian. That's what I mean. Since when is there a Royal Hawaiian Hotel in New York? It isn't in New York, sir. It's in Honolulu. Well, that figures, because the Royal Hawaiian is in Honolulu. Of course. See, that leads me to the next question. What am I doing in Hawaii? I'm sure I I don't know, sir. (sighs) That's what I thought you said. Hey, hey, just one more question. No, no, come here, come here. No, I'm okay, come here. Really? I'll never ask you anything else, I promise. What, sir? This hotel got a bar. Oh, yes, sir. A lovely one. And where is this lovely bar? Downstairs, off the lobby. Thank you. You're a doll. I'm sorry if I upset you. Well, look, if I ever had another mother, I, I really, I hope it's you, okay? Come back later. We'll, we'll, we'll dance. Oh, yes, sir. Absolutely, sir. How you doing, pal? Hello, sir. Bar's pretty crowded. I can show you to a booth if you like. Uh, there's one by the window. No, no, I, I, I want to sit at the bar. There are no seats left at the bar, sir. Look, let me ask you something. The President of the United States comes in here, wants a seat at the bar. You'd have one for him, wouldn't you? I suppose so, sir. Sure you would. 
Why? Because he's your commander in chief. But I guarantee you, he's not going to be here today. So you know what? How about if I take his stool? Well, not my commander, but still. Not yours? What does that mean? This is the United States of America, right? No, sir. It's Hawaii. Yeah, that's what I just said. Hawaii. Are you a state or aren't you? A state? <laughs> Hardly. That's one thing that will never happen. Is that right? Well, you know what? Why don't you take a look at the history books? Because for your information, buddy, Hawaii became a state in 1959. What do you think of that? <laughs> 1959? Well, that's very funny. Yeah, well, you're not funny, all right? Bloody Mary, please. Uh, that stool's occupied. Yeah, by who? The Invisible Man? Guy just stepped out. And you know what? I'll keep it warm for the guy. Uh, give the gentleman a drink. Yeah, I want the tomato juice really anemic with lots of vodka, huh? Maybe five fingers, huh? You're the boss. Sure, baby. We'll take a walk on the beach. Hmm. Then we can have lunch in the room. Sounds swell. Ah, that's better. Keep him coming, my boy. I'm on the last lap of the biggest binge in the world. Ha <laughs> ha. Rough night? Rough night? Why do you try 30 of them? Would you believe it? I passed out in New York a month ago. And this morning, I wake up here. I know the feeling. One time, I fell asleep at the Dublin airport. And, and when I woke up, I was on a British troop train going into Palestine. That really happened. Can you believe that? Good man. <clears throat> Hi, you two. Hi. I'd like you to meet my wife. Charmed. I'd like you to meet my drink. Uh, how do you do? You kids look like you're in love. How long have you been married? One day, six hours, and twelve minutes. No kidding. <laughs> Never would have guessed it. Hey, bartender, you're from New York, aren't you? Born, bred, and raised. How'd you know? Because you got a picture of the great Fiorello LaGuardia. It's the best mayor New York City ever had. It yeah, sure is. Was. How's that? He was a good mayor. That's what I said. No, 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 no. You said he is. Well, isn't he? He was, because he's not here now, is he? No, I, I guess he isn't. He's in New York, where he should be. Yeah, because he's dead. I sure hope not. When did you hear that? Anybody ever tell you you got a wacky, nutsy sense of humor? What are you, the argumentative type? No, not me. I just want to tell you that if you're trying to rip me, I'm going to come back there behind the bar for about seven minutes, and you're going to be fixing all those Bloody Marys with a fresh supply of blood from a broken nose, all right? Hey, take it easy, mister. Let me buy you a drink. No, no, no. Let me buy you one, okay? Come on, around for the newlyweds. You know they're drinking champagne. Hey, what do I look like here? Deadbeat? Come on, give him champagne. Two more. To the bride and groom. Long may she wave. Hey, bartender, over here. What'll it be? So do you off a ship? You bet your life. Best one afloat. The Arizona. The what? The Arizona. When did they dredge her out of the mud? Say... Don't get mad, honey. He didn't mean anything. Talking about my battle wagon, and she's never been close to the mud. Oh, she hasn't, really. Hey, buddy boy, let me tell you something. Got a lovely wife, but a lousy memory. And now, are you trying to tell me the Arizona was never sunk? I'm not trying to tell you. I'm telling you. The Arizona's never been sunk in her life. Never, huh? You know it. You know it. I don't. Okay. I say she got sunk on December 7th, 1941, okay? And that's where she sits today, in the mud at Pearl Harbor, okay? Now, what do you think of that? What'd you say? I said... I have returned. I feel like a new man. And now that new man needs a drink, too. <clears throat> oh, here's your newspaper, bartender. Another one of your liquid libations for me, please? Get off that stool. He was here before. Let me see that paper. Take it with you. On your way out. Let me see this. Jap envoys to FDR. Hey, wait, what kind of paper is this, huh? What are you guys doing? Where'd you get this? The Honolulu Advertiser, Saturday, December 6th, 1941. You owe me for the champagne and uh, one Bloody Mary. But it isn't 1941. Do you hear me? Ask anybody. How about you, you? How about you? Somebody speak up. What is the matter with you people? I have to ask you to leave now, buddy. Oh, what? Because you think it's 1941? Because everybody in here is in on this stupid joke? It's not 1941. It can't be 1941. I mean, how, how could it be? So how can it be 1941, Doc? Can you tell me that? Huh? And the dream ends there? No. It just goes on. I see. But up to that point, each dream is identical, you say? Identical. I even remember going to the door of the bar and looking out in the street. And I, I, I see all the cars. 1939, 40, 41 models, nothing newer. Go on. All right, all right, I get this. <laughs> and this is what separates the men from the wacky. 
I don't think it's a dream, Doc. It's not a dream. Make all the little chicken tracks you want on that little piece of paper. What I'm telling you here is the goods. I believe you. You do? Then why don't you call up the sanitarium and tell them we'll take a double room? Because you're nuts also. I mean, I understand why you think it's real. Some dreams are extremely realistic. As often as not, they're impossible to distinguish from reality. No, you don't get what I'm saying. Look, it isn't just that it's real while I'm asleep, Doc. Well, I'm telling you this, it's still real. It's still real even when I'm awake. All of it. Look, I've had dreams like everybody else, but as soon as it started, I knew it was different. I, do you understand me? Do you understand me? You don't understand me. These are not dreams. If they're not dreams, Mr. Jensen, what are they? What do you think they are? Let's examine the alternatives. I can think of only one. That's the one I'm thinking of, okay? I wake up in a hotel room in 1941. But I mean, I really wake up. I really wake up, and it's really 1941. Do you understand? Going back in time. That's what I'm doing, Doc. I'm going back in time. Oh, interesting. What happens then when you're back in time? <laughs> you sure you want to hear this? I do. Then hold on to your hat, Doc, because from this point on, things go completely screwy. Hello? Want to place a bet? Well, are you a bookie or not? All right, then. I'm going to take Joe Lewis over Buddy Bear. What are the odds on Lewis? Well, they will be scheduled, okay? They're going to fight on January 9th. Yeah, January 9th, okay? Make it Lewis in the first round. Now, what's the line? 30 to 1. <laughs> it's more like it. What do you mean, how do I know? Just trust me, I know. I know, that's all. The name's Jensen. I'm with the Royal Hawaiian. Now, how about the All-Star game for next year? Hey, do you want to cover me or not, huh? Okay, I'll take the American League. Let me ask you something. What kind of odds if I predict the score? Oh, you got I spend the next two and a half hours making bets on sure things, right? Every race, every prize fight, every football game I can remember happening after December of 1941. See, I got to figure that if this goes on, I'm a shoo in to put every bookie in town out of business. Now, I'm not scared, you understand? See, I don't have one idea what I'm doing back here, but as long as I am here, I figure, hey, why not put it to good use? You know what I'm saying? Jensen. That's right. Royal Hawaiian. Oh, hey, 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 how are you, buddy? You're the ensign from, from the bar. I hope you don't mind. No, no, come in, come in. Uh, I just wondered, uh, how you doing? I'm fine. Come on in. Have a drink. My wife, uh, my wife asked me to stop by and see how you felt. Yeah, it was very nice of her. I feel great. I'm fine. Hey, what are you drinking? Uh, no thanks. Uh, we're going swimming. She was a little concerned. My wife, I mean. About what? About me? Well, it's just that down at the bar after you saw the paper and... No, no, no. Don't worry about it. I was, I was going to ring you up and apologize. That whole Arizona bit. Sure. Are you, uh, sick or something? No, 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 I'm not sick. Well, what made you say it wasn't 1941? No, nothing. I was a little whirly in the head, that's all. Sure. Well, we'll be back about four or five. Uh, maybe you'd like to have a drink with us then, if you feel okay. You got yourself a deal. Hey, one more thing. Yeah? So what do you, what do, you do on the Arizona? I'm in the engineering section. You work down below? Yeah, most of the time. Good job? I like it. Well, we'll give you a call. Yeah, yeah, sure thing. How is he? I think he's okay. Uh, said to give him a call when we get back. Oh, that's great. So I remember thinking, right at that moment, these two kids were so much in love, you could take the looks they gave each other, you could spread it on pancakes. And while I'm watching them, it hits me. This boy looks down in the hold of a ship that has about 14 hours left to ride the waves. After that, it goes down under with a thousand men. And suddenly... Making bets on things that I know will happen seems about as interesting as catching lake trout in a milk bottle. You know what I'm saying? Somehow trying to help those two kids is the one thing in the whole wide world that matters. So I do the only thing I can do. I make a fool out of myself. Hey, front desk. Hey, I need directions to get to the Schofield Barracks. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, U.S. Army base. Come in. Excuse me, Colonel, but 
Spit it out, Bailey. That guy is still in the orderly room, sir. Says he wants to see somebody in charge. Who's this now? Some jerk with a tambourine or something. Must be Save a Soul Saturday. What's his story? I can't piece it all together, sir. Something about the Japanese having bombs? <sighs> this ought to be good. Send him in. Yes, sir. Uh, the colonel will see you now. You're Mr... Jensen, Pete Jensen. I'm Colonel Abernathy. What's on your mind, Mr. Jensen? First of all, Colonel, I want to guarantee that I'm not going to get stuck in a rubber room when I'm finished telling you this. You've got it. I have information that the Japanese are bombing Pearl Harbor tomorrow morning. 8 a.m., Honolulu time. You know this to be a fact. Colonel, as sure as I know, the good Lord made racehorses. They're coming over here in about 30 waves off a bunch of carriers. They're going to plaster us while we're still in bed. Oahu, the airfield, right here too. School field barracks. Hmm. This is very serious. Better take immediate steps. Bailey? Sir? Have Captain Franklin contact the naval station at Pearl. Uh, yes, sir. See that they have all personnel standing by. At least 30 PBYs ready to go up. Tell Lieutenant Ordway to call the commanding general. All troops on the beach. <laughs> if you say so, sir. <laughs> all right, come on, knock it off. Cut the game. Ah. <laughs> listen to me, you brass-covered hyena, okay? Don't you say that nobody warned you. I warn you. You gotta listen to me. I'm sure you're right. Now nah, you can leave peacefully, Mr. Jensen, or I'll have you escorted outside. Go walk by myself, okay? And if anybody grabs me, you're gonna have to call the medical corps on the double. We don't appreciate that kind of talk. Is that a fact? And what do you appreciate, Colonel, huh? Maybe you'd appreciate a big punch in the jaw. All the trouble I take for getting over to try to save you people, and this is what I get? All right, Jensen, zip it. You walk on that lower lip one more time, soldier boy, and I'll get you out of the army on a medical. You understand me? Believe me, Mr. Jensen. This is going to hurt me worse than it hurts you. Oh, I believe it. Colonel! Oh! Are you all right? Place this man under arrest and fit him for a straitjacket. Yes, sir. Then what happened? Well, finally they let me leave, right? After I answered some questions about what year it was, and did I know who the president was? I had some trouble with the vice president. Uh, you know, Truman, of course, sure, but, you know, Roosevelt dies, Truman takes over, then it's Eisenhower. Good thing I didn't mention Ike. <laughs> At 41, he was still a white colonel on the general staff in Washington. <laughs> Think of it. They never heard of rock and roll, jet planes, TV, atom bombs. <sighs> anyway, they decided I was harmless. So on the way out, I gave him a V-sign and told him to buy some more bonds. And after that? What am I going to do? I had my shot. So I figure I'm just going to spend the rest of the day drinking quietly. Of course, the next morning they come looking for me to give me a bronze statue, but... But then it's going to be too late, you know? I didn't care anymore. What am I supposed to do? But I'll tell you something. There was some feeling to watch those kids relaxing in the bar with their dates and their drinks. Like... Everything was fine, like they had a future, and all was well with the world, you know? When tomorrow there'd be a couple of thousand of them on their way through hell to get to heaven. Ah, yeah. Likewise. Hey, uh, you know what you were talking about this morning? I got a vague recollection. You know, about the Arizona being sunk? Knock it off. You don't believe me? Well, you don't see me bleeding, do you? I'm not trying to drum up an argument. I just wanted to show you something. Take a look out the window. You see that ship in the harbor? That happens to be the Arizona. So I guess somebody got their signals crossed. She's still afloat. <laughs> Come on, I said knock it off. Mr. Jensen? Yeah, hi. Have that drink with us? Yeah, yeah, sure, thanks. Yeah, yeah. How was the swim? It was wonderful. So how long's it been now? 32 hours and 15 minutes. Oh, uh, and they said it wouldn't last. <laughs> Mr. Jensen? Try Pete. Pete. Well, are you all right now? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. I'm all right. Why? It's just that this morning, you seemed so sure it was another year. I did? Hey, look, honey, you know I'm kind of mixed up here. You, I, I, look, I didn't mean anything personal, all right? I told you to forget it. <sighs> oh, boy, look at you two. What's the matter? I lied just now. I wasn't kidding. The Arizona is going to be sunk. Are we on that again? Yeah, we're on that again. Listen to me, Lieutenant. Anson. Look, whatever. I got no axe to grind, you understand? Tomorrow morning, I'm going down to the basement so I can cuddle up to a furnace and listen to the sirens. You said you're an engineering officer. That means you're down near the boilers. I'm telling you, at about 20 minutes past 8 in the morning, there's not going to be any boilers, you understand? There's not going to be any decks, and there won't be any ship left. That goes for a lot of boilers and a lot of ships and a lot of decks. 
not to mention handsome young ensigns with new brides. Please, don't talk like that. I gotta talk like that. December 7th, 1941 is tomorrow for you, but it's history for me. Do you understand? Last night, I was in New York City, and it was years from now. I've lived through those years. I know what's gonna happen. I know it sounds crazy, but I know what's gonna happen. Hey, you. No more trouble, huh? Hey, you shut your mouth. Nobody's talking to you. Hey, look, look, look. You're nice young kids. I, I ain't got no reason in the world to give you any grief. Okay, just do me a favor and listen. Take a hundred to one shot that this weirdo in front of you maybe has a point, okay? I'm telling you that tomorrow morning we're going to get attacked. And if you're on that ship... I'll be on that ship because that's my birth. You're a nice fellow and all, Mr. Jensen, but if you keep saying wild things and making my wife upset, I'm... Yeah, what are you going to do about it? Sit around holding hands and biting earlobes till he goes back to his ship? Because if this boy goes back to that Arizona, he might not be alive at 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. Repeat, he may not be alive. Please. <laughs> Mr. Jensen, I'm warning you. Hey, buddy, I don't want no trouble. You don't want no trouble, huh? He doesn't want any trouble. Hey, I don't want to give you any trouble. I want to give you music, okay? I want to sing a song for you. Praise the Lord, pass the ammunition. Praise the Lord, pass the ammunition. Praise the Lord, pass the ammunition. And we'll all stay free. Huh? You hear that? <laughs> it's what you're all going to be singing. You want another one? Oh, oh how does it go? Uh, let's remember Pearl Harbor. Come on, come on, you write the words. Come on, come on. All right, buddy, that's it. Shut up. <laughs> Tell me the general can't be reached. I know he can be reached. He may not be alive to call me tomorrow. Yeah, this is... Hello? 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 Yes, I want to call Navy 7096. 7096. Yes, that's right. Hello, is this a naval station? Yeah, let me talk to whoever's in charge. Yeah, hello? Listen, I have some information here. The Japanese are going to attack Pearl Harbor, right? Hello? I said the Japanese are... Hello? Hello? What are we going to do? It's almost too late. What time is it? It's 8 o'clock. It's 8 o'clock in the a.m. 8 o'clock. That means it's December 7th. It's December 7th already. What are we going to do? Why wouldn't anybody listen to me? Why? I told you they were coming. I told you. I told you they were coming. I told you. I told all of you. I told you. I told them, Doc. I told them. I told them over and over. Why wouldn't anybody listen to me? And then? I'm standing there by the French windows, and I'm watching the planes coming low. I'm watching them. The bombs are dropping, strafing. All hell is breaking loose. And that's, that's where I wake up, every time. Realistic and very frightening. How long did you say it's been going on? Every night for a week. And always the same. Everything. The ensign and his girl, the bar, me trying to call from my room. And the moment, the moment I see the planes coming in. Mr. Jensen, I won't attempt to analyze that dream, except to say this. Very often we dream with a purpose. It can signify something deeply rooted in the subconscious. The things you dream about may not be what's really bothering you. Oh, don't try to outlogic me, Doc, okay? You think I'm nuts, don't you? I know what I know. I can't explain it. But that's why I came to see you, because I thought maybe you could explain it. I know for a fact I'm going back in time. And I'll tell you something else, that even after I wake up and I'm laying in bed and I'm thinking about the dream, I know it's not supposed to end there. I know one of these nights it's going to go beyond that. But you have no idea what might transpire. No, not one. All right. Let's approach it this way. Assume that it is possible somehow to go back in time. You go back and you do something, uh, warn people, say, about an accident so that it doesn't happen. But what have you done then, Mr. Jensen? By altering the past, you change the future. Here, look. This is the present, and my lighter is on my desk. Now I go back in time and I pick up this lighter. I put it in my pocket and I keep it there. Then I return to the present. By any rights, having removed that lighter, it should no longer be here. But if it is, you get my point? Look, Doc. Try this analogy, Mr. Jensen. Supposing I were to go back in time and I got hit, say, by a taxi. Now it figures that if I went back in time and got killed, I couldn't be alive today. Not only that, but think of the other lives affected. I wouldn't have children. I wouldn't have bought a house. Uh, all these things wouldn't exist because I changed them. Ergo, I wouldn't be here to go back. 
So? So time travel is not possible. It can't be. It creates an insoluble paradox. Therefore, we can safely assume that what we're talking about is a dream. It has to be. Try this then. I've never been to Honolulu in my whole life. So after the first couple of times, I decided, I decided to put it to a test. Go on. I remember the ensign's last name. It's kind of an odd name, not easy to forget. Janowski. Told me it came from a little town called White Oak, Wisconsin. So I placed a call. There was only one Janowski in the phone book. Woman answered, his mother. I said it was a friend of his from Honolulu. And was he there? And then? She told me that her son and his wife were killed in Honolulu on December 7th, 1941. He went down with the Arizona. She was shot down near King Street by a fighter plane, a Japanese Zero. A Japanese Zero, Doc. You sure you've never been to Honolulu? Yeah, I've been there. When? In the dream, which isn't a dream. Okay, Doc, your turn. I don't hear you talking. That's because, at the moment, I don't know what to say. The patient lay on the couch. We had been talking for hours. It was Saturday, and I'd planned to leave early and go play golf. But I was concerned about this man and his story. It was incredible. Then finally, I knew he was asleep. It wasn't a deep sleep. By the look on his face, Mr. Jensen was far from resting, though his eyes were closed. Mr. Jensen? Are you asleep, Mr. Jensen? So I decided to let him rest while I thought it through. Who knows, maybe he'd even finish his dream this time. How's your eye, Mr. Jensen? I mean, Pete. Hey, don't worry about me. I'm fine. I'll put a piece of steak on it. Sorry the bartender hit you. I should have stopped him, but I kind of got carried away, too. No, no harm done. Well, go lie down and take it easy. Uh, maybe we'll see you later before I go back to the ship. Hey, Janowski, do me one favor, will you? Play hooky tomorrow morning. He's out of his head. Look, if you never do one thing for the rest of your life, do this, will you? Come on. Stay off that ship. Take the little lady. Get away from Pearl Harbor. Come on. I don't care where you go. Get on a Pan Am and go to the Canal Zone. Anywhere, but just get out of here. That's a great plan. And you know what it would cost me? Only my commission in the Navy, that's all. Jimmy, forget it. If you don't go, do you know what that's going to cost you? Just a little item like your life and hers too. I tried to be nice, but this time I swear I... Come on, Jimmy. Let's go to our floor. Please, come on. What do you got to lose? I'm going to try to save your lives, that's all. Poor dumb crazy kids. Don't you tell me the general can't be reached. I know he can be reached. He might not be alive tomorrow to call me, please. Hello? Hello? Yes, I want to call Navy 7096. That's right. Hello? Is this the naval station? Let me talk to whoever's in charge. This is Ensign Lamers. It's my watch and it's your nickel, so go ahead. What's on your mind? Listen to me. The Japanese are going to attack Pearl Harbor. Who? What are they going to do? I said the Japanese... What have you been drinking? I'll tell you what. Take a nice shower and dive into a percolator. Good night. Hello? Hello? It's almost too late. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? Oh, again. What time is it? 8 o'clock in the a.m. Already 8... Oh, that means it's December 7th. Why wouldn't anybody listen to me? Why? I told you they were coming. I told you. I told you. I told you. I told you. I stood there at the window for a long time, thinking about Mr. Jensen and his problem, his dream. I knew I had to wake him and send him on his way, at least for now. I could give him some sleeping pills, uh, maybe a program of therapy, till I could talk to some doctors that I knew and ask if they had ever had a case like this one. Mr. Jensen? Mr. Jensen? It's getting late. I, I'm, I'm afraid I'm going to have to... Mr. Jensen? Mr. Jensen, where did you... Carol? Yes, Dr. Gillespie? What happened to the patient? 
The patient? Jensen. I didn't realize he'd slipped out. I let him fall asleep on the couch because he looked so exhausted. I don't know anything about him, Mr. Jensen, Doctor. The man who was in my office all afternoon. It's a good thing there were no other appointments. I hope you have his number. I wanted to schedule a series of sessions starting next week. I- I'm really sorry, sir, but I I don't show any appointments at all today. I was wondering how long you needed me. I have a date this evening, and... Hold on. You mean to tell me a man named Jensen didn't walk in here and ask to see me? Big guy, uh, shirt with flowers on it? Why, no, sir. I've been here the whole time. I thought you wanted me to stay and work on the files. Uh, All right, Carol, that will be all. You can go now. I'll lock up. Yes, sir. Good night, sir. Try this analogy, Mr. Jensen. Supposing I were to go back in time and I got hit, say, by a taxi. Now it figures that if I went back in time and got killed, I couldn't be alive today. 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 Alive today. Alive today. today. Alive today. Alive today. Alive today. Alive today. Alive today. Welcome to Andy's place. Where can I get you? Bourbon on the rocks, please. One bourbon coming up. Here you go. Need a light? No, thanks. I've got it. A lighter? Yes, I do. Right here. In my pocket. Cheers. Happy dreams. Same to you. What in the... Problem, mister? No, no, it's just that picture there. The one in the frame on the wall? Ah, uh, yeah. Group of men in uniform. All except one in a flowered shirt. He looks familiar. Pete Jensen. He used to attend bar here a long time ago. You heard of him? Jensen? Uh, no. I don't remember that name. He looked familiar, that's all. Where is he now? Him? He's dead. He got killed before I was born at Pearl Harbor. More down here? Sure. Do more of the same. Once upon a time, there was a psychiatrist named Arnold Gillespie and a patient whose name was Peter Jensen. You might want to make note of both names for the record should you ever run across either one in a textbook. It is now Saturday, October 5th at exactly 5.10 p.m. You might want to make note of that, too, if you're even remotely interested in a new theory about something we'll call, for want of a better term, the time element, at least as it is measured in the Twilight Zone. More from the Twilight Zone after this. You are about to enter another dimension. A dimension not only of sight and sound, but of mind. A journey into a wondrous land of imagination. Next stop, the Twilight Zone. Hi, this is Stacy Keach. I'd like to take a moment to tell you about our Twilight Zone website at twilightzoneradio.com. At twilightzoneradio.com, you'll find the latest information on these Twilight Zone radio dramas, including behind-the-scenes photographs, plus the newest product releases, trivia contests, ways to contact us, other Twilight Zone-related info and merchandise, plus links to other fascinating websites. So make your next stop twilightzoneradio.com. Visit twilightzoneradio.com to purchase these Twilight Zone radio dramas on cassette and CD or call toll-free 1-866-989-ZONE. That's 1-866-989-9663. 